Hi, this is Zhong Wenzhe and I got four models of iPhone 12. So in this video, we will talk about the using experience of these models and to talk about the information, what we already know. First, the names. Based on the name stickers recently leaked from the OEM, the iPhone 12 series include a seemingly familiar name, iPhone 12 mini, yeah, this one, along with three others, iPhone 12, iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max. The iPhone 12 mini is the small size model in the 12 series with a 5.4 inch display and all screen design. It adopts a flat edge design. Yes, flat edges for the whole series this time. Back to the design aesthetics of the iPhone 4. The advantage, narrow edges in your hand and smaller sizes overall. But of course, it feels more angular in hand and curved edges. The iPhone 12 mini is even smaller than iPhone SE, making it the best model for single hand experience. Its display, however, is 5.4 inch, which is bigger than the 4.7 inch iPhone SE. Very useful indeed. The iPhone 12 mini uses a Face ID as biometric authentication. Good news for fans of small sized devices. Both iPhone 12 and 12 Pro have a 6.1 inch display. Because of the flattened edge design, its overall size is smaller than iPhone 11. If you compare the iPhone 12 Pro with the iPhone 11 Pro, the former's display is 0.3 inches larger than that of the latter. But there is not much difference in the overall size of the two models. That means the iPhone 12 Pro has a larger screen without changing the form factor of its predecessor. There is one thing worth noting. iPhone 11 uses the LCD screen, resulting in wider bezels and a larger size. But as we can see from the iPhone 12 and the 12 Pro dummy models, the screen size is exactly the same as that of the device. So probably iPhone 12 uses the more advanced OLED screen. The iPhone 12 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch display. It is a little bit larger than the 6.5 inch iPhone 11 Pro Max. In terms of holding experience and the screen size, the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 and the 12 Pro strike the best balance and suit the needs of most customers. The mini model features the best single hand experience, but the screen is a little bit small for game players. The 6.7 inch Max model offers great viewing experience on the big screen, but not to be held conveniently in one hand. On the back, 12 and the 12 mini use the glossy glass design while 12 Pro and Pro Max feature a matte finish. iPhone 12 will probably have six colors, white, black, rose gold, green, sky blue, and red. The new colors for iPad Air 4. If rose gold is really among these color options, this will be the first pink iPhone with the glass back. I guess many customers will struggle between the sky blue and rose gold. A pink iPhone? Wouldn't you call it cheating? The iPhone 12 Pro series will probably come in white, space gray, gold, and dark blue. The dark blue will likely be consistent with that in Apple Watch Series 6. The same is true for gold, which will look much more like real gold. There'll be a chance that space green might be replaced by the graphite, but just a slim chance. After all, a space gray in 11 Pro is just so successful. I just love it. The entire 12 series will use Face ID as biometric authentication. Rumor has it that the notch will become narrower at this time, but no big change from the 11 series. I'm curious if the new iPhone supports 120 Hz refresh rate. Previously, when I upgraded my 11 Pro Max to iOS 14 beta, I saw adaptive refresh rate option. Obviously, back then, Apple had a plan for a model with a refresh rate higher than 60Hz. But that option was removed in later software updates. Based on what I've learned, the four new models probably won't support higher 
refresh rate because supply chain capacity is inefficient for such shipment. iPhone 12 and 12 mini will probably have dual cameras, 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max will equipped with three cameras. The Pro series will have LiDAR scanners for more accurate distance measurements. And I also heard some news that the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max may equip four times, maybe five times telescope lens in these models. According to the rumors, iPhone 12 Pro Max will have an exclusive feature of a more advanced stabilizer for the image sensors enables more stable video shooting and a longer exposure in low light conditions. As we can see from the dummy models, iPhone 12 Pro Max does have a larger camera matrix than 11 Pro Max, probably because of the new stabilizer. As for the chip, A14 is a certainty. It is the only 5 nanometer mobile phone chip in the world now, featuring stronger performance and greater efficiency. Although there is no official comparison between a 14 and a 13, a little mathematical calculation gives us a clue. Since the CPU performance in a 14 has a 40% improvement over a 12, CPU in a 13 is improved by 20% over a 12. It means CPU in a 14 has a 17% improvement over a 13. In the same vein, GPU in A14 is improved by 8% over A13. It must be noted, however, that these data are based on A14 in the iPad Air. It may have an even stronger performance in iPhone 12. Apple reduces the battery capacity for iPhone 12 series this time because of the greater efficiency in the chip. With regard to charging, 12 Pro series are expected to come with the all-new 20W PD fast charger. We already had a sneak peek of that in the new 8th generation iPad. As for the iPhone 12 series, will Apple remove the adapter for environmental purpose or replace it with 20W PD charger? Let's wait and see. Finally, the biggest question mark, which system for iPhone 12. No rumors whatsoever so far. With the recent release of Android 11 and Harmony OS 2.0, is iOS 14 good enough for iPhone? <laughs> Let's find out answer in the special event on October 13. Okay, that is my big guess of the iPhone 12 series. Maybe my next video is about the real iPhone 12. Who knows?